Hi, here I've got in front of me an original vintage Roland SH-101 that's made its way all the way direct from 1982. It only took 40 years to get here. And I'm comparing that today with the soft tube Model 82, which is their emulation of this. And here we've got it in all its 4K glory, looking a little bit more knackered than the one I've got in front of me, actually. And anyone that's familiar with the SH-101 can recognize it immediately. Obviously, we've got slightly different looking sliders and switches. These knobs look a little bit more like a 303. Switches, are they a bit more Juno-esque, maybe? And the sliders. But yeah, it's definitely an SH-101. Got the LFO, the VCO, source mixer, VCF, and the envelope. Just got a single oscillator, remember? So the source mixer just mixes together a square, a sawtooth, and the sub. And the sub can be one octave down, two octaves down, as, um, as a square or two octaves down as a thin pulse and plus we've got noise as well. The VCF is exactly what you'd expect from a Roland synth of its day and the envelope is exactly the same again. We've got gate and trigger, we've got gate plus we've got LFO mode as well. And down on the bottom we've got the simple sequencer plus next to the keys we've got the sort of modulation and bender controls which includes a trigger as well. So a slightly different layout and we do have a few extra options obviously like we can sync the LFO and the sequencer, as well as having this doubling and drive on the output. So it looks like an SH-101, but does it sound like an SH-101? Let's take a listen. So I'm just starting off with a simple sawtooth, like always. Let's stick that portamento on. just to make them sound the same, but let's turn it off. And you can hear there that the SH-101 isn't calibrated very well. We've got it in tune on the bottom two octaves. But as soon as we go a little bit higher, that C's out of tune. So anything above this G is out of tune, whereas obviously on the soft tube one, and the soft tube actually goes a little bit sharp on the high end, it's not spot on, which is quite interesting because it does give it that more analog feel, I suppose. Maybe you just can't get an SH-101 that's perfect across that range. And I'm trying to get the levels absolutely right because if something's a little bit louder, it sounds a little bit brighter. And taking a look at the frequency analysis. They're almost identical, aren't they? Just a tad brighter on the soft tube. And actually, I can't do that on the SH-101. I can't play low enough. I've got it on the lowest range, and the lowest note I can play is this F. Whereas, of course, with a soft tube, I can go a little bit lower. So that's quite a difference, I suppose. But they sound, to all intents and purposes, the same. I am only playing a sawtooth after all. So let's do something a little bit more complex. So moving over to the pulse then. And you can hear there's a distinct difference there. And you can hear there on the soft tube that it doesn't sound like a perfect square. I haven't got my oscilloscope plug-in working yet on the new Mac, so I can't look at it. But if you look at the frequency analysis, you can see those intermediate harmonics that are popping up and they happen when you just nudge it off 50%. Whereas on the vintage one, I'm getting a full on square of 50%. And you can tell that because you're not getting those intermediate harmonics. So let's put some in. Can't quite get them small enough. There you go. The 
volumes are slightly different, but... It sounds ever so much brighter. I'm not sure it's brighter, it's just got more of those intermediate harmonics up at the top end. Quite similar, but not as identical sounding as the Sawtooths. But it still feels to me like an SH-101, which is what it's all about. Two analog synths, 40 years old, you know, you're never going to get them sounding identical, as we all know. Mine sounds a little bit mellower, maybe. Maybe it just needs a little bit of a calibration. But when you start playing it... does sound like an SH-101 to me. And just a quick note about getting fine tuning on these sliders. If you press on a Mac at least, Command, and then you slide them, you get much finer control. Let's turn that on again. And I know I'm not looking at the filters yet, but I'm just trying to get a feel for if the soft tube does have the same sort of character as the SH-101. And so far, yes, I know the pulse isn't identical to mine, but overall it's so far feeling like an SH-101. Let's put a bit of sub in there as well. So definitely got the right feel. Let's knock those filters back up again. Sounds pretty similar to me. Yeah, very, very similar, aren't they? Sound very close, don't they? I'd say the SH-101 just sounds a little bit mellower. Maybe a little bit of calibration <laughs> required. Let's try that with the Sawtooth. Definitely got the same character. Let's try that on the tighter or the smaller pulse. To all intents and purposes, they're the same synth, aren't they, really? Let's bring the pulse in as well. Just a bit of 
volume difference there, that's all. In fact, let's put PWM on. Again, it really does have the character, doesn't it? So, okay, that's the oscillators done, really. I just think there's a tiny difference there in that pulse, and it might just be that whatever soft tube was used needed a little bit of extra calibration, or it's just 40 years in there, or this, more than likely, it's this needs some calibration. But definitely got the right character, so let's move over to the filter. And I'm just going to start this off with some filter sweeps, because the depth that you get from the SH-101 filter is something else. Those rumbles, if you've got massive bass bins there, your windows will be shaking. I'm just going to stop it there at 500 hertz and see what the, what the software does. It's got those bassy rumbles, hasn't it? Most people, though, won't be able to hear that, depending on what you're listening on, but stuff below 30 hertz is earth shattering. It's amazing, that is. The step in there is the key step. It's got nothing to do with the software. In fact, I'll use mouse and command to get it smoother. So keeping that at 500, what do we have on the SH-101? Sounds the same, doesn't it? We've got a little bit of an extra peak on the, on the software. We've got it on the SH-101, but it's just a little bit louder looking. Looking, I say, because I don't know if you can really hear it. I don't know why I'm playing different keys. I've not got keyboard tracking on, but let's stick it on. Can I go any lower? No. Same synth, isn't it? Let's bring in a sawtooth. Really, really like that. Voodoo Ray is just one of those tracks that... Don't know if that sounds identical to the track, I'm just doing it off the top of my head, but... To me, that's the sound of the SH-101. Oh, it's great, that is. Yeah, <laughs> can't fault that at all. Let's just play a little bit more with the filter and whack the cutoff frequency up to its maximum. See what happens. Let's turn all these down. There you go, it stops around 15 on the real deal. So what's it do on the software? It's about identical, isn't it? So yeah, filter gets a really big thumbs up from me. What else could we look at? Let's take a look at the sequencer. The sequencer on the SH-101 is really super simple and Softube have emulated it identically. You've not got any bells and whistles here at all, just a straight off stick the notes in and play them back. So let's just try something. Dead simple, you just press hold when you want to tie the note, and you just press rest when you want to rest. Let's try that then on this. So press load to record it, and one, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. One, hold. One, rest. One, hold. One, 
rest after that, and that should sound the same. There you go. I said it was simple, didn't I? Uh, we can also sync this one to the sequencer. I can't do it while I'm recording because I'm actually recording. Um, if I try it, let's just see what happens. Well, there you go. I can do it while I'm recording. Can't do that on the original, obviously. It was invented before MIDI. It does have CV and gate in and out, but it doesn't work brilliantly with the order rack, or at least this one <laughs> doesn't. Uh, what else have we got on the, on the software? We've got this thing called Dublin. This is quite cool. Let's just put the sustain back up. Oh, and drive as well, but let's just look at the uh, Dublin for now. And basically, it's adding a second oscillator and detuning it. In fact, that's more random than just a detune because I'm not getting the sort of the constant throb that you'd normally get. All right, but I actually prefer the sounds of the SH-101 just on its own. I'd do that with a little bit of PWM. Just add a bit of this, a bit of LFO. It really is behaving like my SH-101. It does feel the same, it feels like the same instrument. One thing we've not looked at yet is the envelopes. I really like the way that on the sort of classic Junos that you get that really snappy envelope with the filter. Let's just have a little play on the original first. And that's pure Roland, isn't it? Nice little bit of punch. Let's try that on the soft tube. Yeah, that's the same, isn't it? Another little thing we've got on the envelope on the SH-101 that a lot of people don't realise is that it's got an LFO mode, so let's just play with it. Put it into LFO mode. Try that on the soft tube. Sound the same, so yeah, I'm um, quite impressed by this all in all. Did we take a listen to the drive? I don't think we did, let's just try that. Oh, that's, that's pretty dirty and disgusting in a really nice way, isn't it? I do like that. Uh, something else you get with this is the modular sort of unit. So each of the sections, the VCO, the source mixer, uh, the VCF and the like, all come as modular sections. Let's just pull them up here. Yeah, so there you go, as part of the soft tube modular section, as with the Model 72, you can see that there, and the Model 84. So you can do all sorts of things with that. Obviously, I haven't got time to show in this. Just wanted to show in this how this sounds compared to the SH-101. So what are my final thoughts? Well, I think this is another home run by Softube. It really does sound and feel like my SH-101. Minor differences here and there, as you might expect with something that's 40 years old and has been uncalibrated for God knows how many years. I don't know the last time anyone have ever looked at this, if anyone ever has actually, because I did buy this second hand, I didn't buy this when I was a baby. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please subscribe, ring the bell, and maybe join me over 
on my Patreon page uh, where I've got all sorts of little bits and bobs that help you and also help support the channel. So I will see you next time. Thank you.